response has been huge, and Back to the Bible has become a very uh, great, trusted ministry partner, and I think you'll find out why in just a few moments. But I, I want you to know, and I think Andy will touch on this a little bit, just how great of a ministry partner these guys have been. They've been incredible to work with. They're, they've been just wonderful all around. But since we've actually launched this in November, uh, they have actually saved our denominational churches over $300,000 uh, for this mobile app collectively. When you look at the initial setup fee and the first year of subscription to it, it's phenomenal what they've been able to give to us and been so generous in doing. So this is really something I think you're going to be really glad you came to. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Andy. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Well, good morning. Come on, we have to be interactive. This is a seminar. Good morning. I usually do these things online and I mute everybody so that I don't have to hear them. Because when you're doing things online and people use their microphones online, oftentimes there's a lot of feedback and echoes, and I'll be talking and then hearing myself speak again and again and again, and that's very annoying, but I don't want to mute myself and I don't want to mute you. I'd love to hear from you as we go on. I will have a time of questions and answers at the end, but um, just, just give me some feedback as we go along. I, I want to hear you say, yeah, or no, or that's great, or this is fantastic. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. A little bit about Go Tandem, a ministry of Back to the Bible, and then the opportunity that you have uh, that I'm going to present to you today to get an app for your ministry. Um, my name is Andy. Last name is Zawacki. I've lived with it all of my life, so there's no pun or joke that you could make that I haven't yet heard, I don't think. I live right now in Fort Mill, South Carolina, which is just outside of Charlotte. I moved there about six months ago um, from upstate New York where I was a pastor for 15 years. Uh, six years as a youth pastor, followed by nine years as a senior pastor of a local church, a non-denominational church in Latham, New York. About a year ago, um, maybe a little bit more than a year ago, the Lord began to put on uh, my wife and my heart that there was a season of transition and we were to trust Him. And basically what we did was we resigned the church because we felt like it was the right time to do that. And I I found the best situation. I, I, I got this great job working with Go Tandem where I get to talk to other pastors about the opportunity to get an app for your church. And I just, it's just a great testimony of the Lord's faithfulness and his direction and his guidance. But uh, that's who I am a little bit. I work for Go Tandem, which is a ministry of Back to the Bible. John just mentioned that we're a 75 year old ministry. We were founded by a man named Theodore Epp. And his desire in starting the ministry was to use modern technology to bring people back to the Bible. 75 years ago, modern technology was the radio. So we have a radio program that's been going strong Monday through Friday, 30 minutes a day. Our current Bible teacher is Dr. Warren Wearsby. Perhaps you've heard of us uh, over the years. Well, about 11 years ago, Back to the Bible hired our current CEO, Dr. Arnie Cole. Arnie Cole is a behaviorist, a researcher by trade. He worked in communities that actually, he worked with uh, those who had brain injuries, and he actually helped them have life transformation, set up a whole business structure to help people have life transformation. And being a late-in-life conversion to Christ, it was very clear to him that God was calling him to take what he had experienced in his secular life and bring it into helping people have real life transformation, which is with Jesus Christ, having a dynamic relationship with Jesus. So that is his passion. But we are the ministry, we are, as a ministry, we're very concerned about what actually works and what doesn't. What actually brings life transformation? So because of our emphasis on research and scientific research, we began a trek about eight, nine years ago where we surveyed 150,000 people from across the world. We asked them all types of questions about their faith, about their lifestyle, about their habits, and we processed all of that scientific research and we found something really cool. We found something called the power of four. Anybody ever heard of the power of four? That was your chance to interact? No. Oh, no. Okay, well, let me tell you about the power of four. Thank you. Uh, power of four says uh, basically this. 
If you engage in your Bible four days a week or more, you are very likely to have life transformation. You're more likely to have life transformation if you're engaging in your Bible four or more times per week than any other factor that we surveyed and we researched. So every other spiritual discipline, every other thing you can do that's good in your life, those are good things. But if you're after life transformation, our study confirmed what my mom told me. But this is science. This is scientific data that has been accepted in academia. So being true to our roots, we said, how can we use modern technology to help people engage in their Bibles? So that led us to the app world. And we created an app called Go Tandem. Now you might be saying, what am I talking about when I say life transformation? I'm talking about these kind of statistics. If you are engaged in your Bible four or more times a week, you are 228% more likely to share your faith with someone else than someone who is not engaged in their Bible four or more times per week. You're 416% more likely to give to your local church than if you are not engaged in your Bible four or more times a week. These statistics are startling. Not only do the positive things increase... But take a, take a look on the bottom of your scale, on the, the screen here. The negative behaviors, the sin that so easily besets us, those negative behaviors significantly decrease in our life when we are engaged in the Bible through four or more times per week. So you're going to notice like discouragement decreases by 31%. Fear and anxiety will decrease 14%. Destructive thoughts are down 32%. This is scientific proof that engaging in your Bible works. That it actually is good for you. It brings life transformation. And I think we all can say we know that there's power in the Word of God. It is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to separate bone and marrow. How can we engage with it more? And so what do I mean by Bible engagement? Bible engagement is a three-step process. It's the three R's of Bible engagement. We want to receive God's word. We want to reflect on what it's saying. And we need to then respond to it to actually engage in God's word. Three-step process. Receive it so you can read it or you can listen to it. Reflect on it. Ask yourself some questions. What is this saying to me? Respond to it. What do I need to do because I've read this passage? I've received this passage. That is Bible engagement. Do that four or four days or more per week on a consistent basis. Your life is going to transform. That's our scientific model. Our, our, our research indicates this. So we created Go Tandem. Go Tandem is an app for your smartphone. It is very simply a Bible engagement app. It's different than a Bible reading app, and I'm going to explain to you how it is different. When you begin the process, when you download GoTandem, the first thing that you're asked to do is give your email address and password, set up an account, and then from there, you are asked to complete a, an assessment, a spiritual assessment. We ask you questions about what you believe, what your faith base is. We ask you, basically, we want to find out, are you a Christian? Do you have ideas of Christianity or are you a seeker? Once we ask you these questions, we go on to ask you about five-minute survey about what's going on in your life. We ask you about the struggles that you have on a regular basis. We ask about anger and greed and jealousy and pride and gossiping and slander. We ask you a bunch of questions asking you to tell us what is it you struggle with on a regular basis? Once this process is finished, you get through the assessment, you are given a spiritual profile. Spiritual profile is on the left side of your screen, and I'm being very vulnerable with all of you folks. This is my spiritual profile. It simply says that my strengths show, the assessment shows that I'm strongest in faithfulness, joy, and knowledge. Um, so, this is great to get, you know, see your strengths written down there for you after you take the assessment and to look at it and say, wow, I can, I can see how that applies in my life. But then the best part from my perspective is actually seeing that the assessment picks up on things that I struggle with. 
And there are things that everyone struggles with. We all have struggles. The assessment shows in the areas for growth that it says Go Tandem will send me content designed to help me grow in self-control, goodness, and gentleness. Can anyone relate? Am I the only person that needs to grow in those areas? I need to grow in those areas. The content will also help me in my struggles with growing spiritually, with fear, and with criticizing others. Those are things that were picked up based on my answers to the spiritual assessment. Now, the beauty about what we do is that we match biblical content to where you need it most. So you will receive messages from Go Tandem that are Bible content. It's the scripture, but it's meant to help you get through the three R's of, of Bible engagement in a way that meets a need that's very present in your life. So the message that you get today will be very different than the message that I get today because we answered those questions differently. If you look on the right side of your screen, you're going to see an example of a Bible content message. You'll notice it's not a devotional. It is not a commentary. It's just God's word in the New Living Translation. Question, why do we use the New Living Translation? Because we have a copyright with the New Living Translation. If you were to click on the thing where it says why, uh, the actual reference, Job 26, 13 through 14, you can click on that. That will take you to YouVersion online. You can look up the passage in any version that you wish and study it all that you want from there. The section where it says why this message, if you were to click on that, a little screen will pop up and it will begin to tell you how this content piece relates to some area where you need to grow. People who have read this have found it encouraging if they're struggling with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You'll notice that underneath the line, there are two questions. Those questions are meant to help you get to the second R of Bible engagement. You've received the word. The two questions help you reflect on the word. And if you could actually see the entire screenshot, it gets cut off here, but below on the bottom section of the content piece, there's a little place where you can actually take notes right in the app that help you get to that third very important R of Bible engagement, responding to God's word. Now I'm going over this as this is go tandem, but this is what runs through the app that we're providing for your church as a church of the Nazarene. The power of Go Tandem runs through an app that is yours. <clears throat> currently, actually this is as of last night, uh, currently we've got 67,200 and some odd numbers. We had 300 downloads yesterday, so we're over 67,000 people using our app on a daily basis. We have over 200, we average over 200 new downloads a day. People getting in and using us as a, as a spiritual growth tool. We've been around, I like to say we've been around really active about 18 months or so, give or take something like that. We keep analytics, statistics, demographics about all that we do. This is a good example of a screenshot of what appears in my office in Charlotte and in our headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. We've got several of these types of screens that tell you a lot of information. How many users we have, how many came in yesterday. We had a whopping day on Sunday, 586 people came into our app on Sunday. Praise God, we had a church, unbeknownst to us, simply call out and say, hey, you guys need to download this app. And it explained a little bit about us. We don't even know the people, and boom, this is, we're, we're beginning to get traction in this world of the app world. It's very exciting, but we break you down. We can see the statistics. Those who tell us they're engaged in God's word four or more times a week are all the way on the right, about 50%. Tell us that they're engaged in God's word four or more times. 50% tell us that they're not. And we break it down into two categories. Those who are one day, two days, or three days. And those that tell us zero. And that's, we love them because we are really meant to help you grow right from where you are to getting to know Jesus more and more through his word every single day in a way that meets you right where you are. We break it down by gender and age groups. We break it down between what we call people who are seekers, people who are followers, and then in between, those people who have ideas of Christianity, but they're not necessarily following Christ with their lives. And then um, how, we heard, how you heard about us and what religion that you are. So keep this in mind as we move forward, because I want to talk now about this opportunity for your church to have an app. 
And this, this, the power of Go Tandem will run through an app that is yours. There's an app out there that I created. It's called Between Sundays. If you are unfamiliar with Go Tandem, I'm going to ask that you not download Go Tandem. What? Shocking. Download Between Sundays instead. Because it will give you an example of what it would be like to actually have an app that is not GoTandem, but has powered by GoTandem. So if you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you can simply go to the, web, to the, the app stores and look for Between Sundays. You should be able to find us and download us. Once you do, you're going to notice that I was able to choose my color scheme. I chose a white background with dark lettering. You could choose that, or you could choose a dark background with white lettering. You also get to choose complementary colors. In this case, there's a blue, there's, the lettering is blue, and later on you're gonna see green. You get to choose whatever colors you want. You get to choose two colors, and basically that might actually line up with your current logo. The, the lo all-important logo that brands your church, if you have one, if you don't have one, uh, John has a way of getting you one, I believe. Am I right on that? Yes. And we'll make sure that that happens and we can work process it from there. But once, once you actually get to know the app, you get to see some of the great qualities that we do provide to you. So here is a screenshot on the left side of the menu tab of Between Sundays. And I want to go through each category to explain to you the power of it um, for you. Now, if you can just imagine, instead of it saying Between Sundays, insert your church's name your ministry's name, or some unique name that you want to come up with. We've had some unique names coming from this, this, this uh, denomination. There's some neat things that are going on. We have 160 currently, a little bit more than that, uh, churches and ministries who are in the process of getting white labels or more. You have a question? What's your most unique that you remember? Rev Ever? I guess that's his name, Reverend Ever. I, I don't, Rev Ever Ministries or something like that. I thought that was very unique. Uh, a lot of people will do like, uh, they use the word Naz. So Big Chap Naz is another one that comes to mind. Just some unique names out there for having uh, uh, the names for your app. Uh, on the left side of your screen, you're going to see the tab that says Messages. On the right side of your screen is the example of those messages. The Bible content pieces that Go Tandem runs are messages that get sent to your app. The first one up there where it says Insight for Living, that is one of those examples of a Bible content message coming to your smartphone, to your, to your app. Uh, there's a track system, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute, so we're going to bypass that. Spiritual profile is where you can see your strengths and the areas where you need to grow. An events tab, all important events tab, keep your congregation currently knowing what's going on by listing the events of your local church or ministry. I'll talk about that in a few moments. Settings is where you can choose how many of those Bible content messages you wish to have personally sent to you each day. You want one or you want 12? Doesn't matter, you can have as many as you want at whatever time you want them, they'll come right to your smartphone. Uh, uh, let's see, I uh, yeah, did the, the events. Resources is a place where you can link to your current website. If you don't have a website, we can just dissolve that or not have that happen. Contact us, phone number, email address. And then the all-important donate feed. If you already have a way to get online giving, we can link to that right from your smartphone. So your app, open it up, click, they hit donate, boom, they can give right from their smartphone to you, to your church, no need to actually have anything else. Just one touch, boom, they're there. These are great features for 2015. This is where the technology is taking us. We as the church need to be part of that process to reap the benefits thereof. Let me talk a little bit about the track system. This is one of my favorite features about what we do. The track system is a great way for you to communicate with specialized segments of your church congregation. So let's say you're a small group church. You've got a dozen small groups or six small groups. Each one of those small groups can have their own track. I'm Joe, member of your church. I download your app. I go to the tracks and I see there's a choice of different tracks to sign up for. One of them is my small group. I click on that. And when the small group leader wants to communicate with his small group or her small group, she sends out a message and those who are signed up for that track get that message. 
It works for the youth group. It works for your Sunday school classes. It works for your fellowship groups, your men's group, your women's group. It can work for curriculum. You can send out curriculum. You can actually teach a class. Everybody signs up for the track and you want to send them extra videos or uh, you want to send them messages, uh, recorded messages. It supports audio, video, graphics, and text. Really, the possibilities are limitless as far as what you can do to communicate to segments of your population. Let me give you some examples. Let's say that you have, uh, you have a new believers class in your church. And so every fall or every spring, you teach a new believers class. Well, you can encourage them, hey, this is Christianity 101. We have a track for that in our app. You go find our app. Then we go, we actually, you make an app, Christianity 101, people sign up for it, and you can make it so that it's a sequential track, which means that you have 12 days of content, 10 days of content, 25 days of content. Each day you send them a message, no matter when they come into that track, they will get day number one's content piece sent to them. So you have a list of 20 scriptures you want them to actually get as a new believer. On the first day that they sign up for that track, they get the first message. And it keeps going all the way through until you finish the track and then basically they fall off that track. Another way to look at this, and the, that's, a, that's the sequential uh, way to do a track. The other way to organize the track is a calendarized approach. This way, you can have ongoing communication with members of your group. So in the example, if you have a youth group track, you can set it up so that you can send everybody who signed up for that track a message on a specific day of the calendar year. And so I want to send a message out tomorrow. Anybody who's in that track as of tomorrow will get that particular message. This is a great way for you to communicate to segments of your population in a very concentrated and unique way. Again, it supports audio, video, text, and graphics. So there's really nothing you can't do with the track system. Calendar of events. Very simply, uh, on the left side is a list. If you were to click on the first one, which was the Thanksgiving praise service, I need to kind of update this because I haven't done it again. I haven't put a new one into my PowerPoint presentation since November. But if you were to click on Thanksgiving praise service, you would get what's on the right side of the screen. The right side of the screen pops up. It gives you a description of the actual event. This was a fake event, but okay, nonetheless. There's a description of it. My contact information that I've included. So if anybody has any questions, they know who to contact how to get a hold of me. What, I love this, this portion. It has the date, the time, and the location listed. And then this great feature, it's called add to my calendar. Can you see it down there? It's sort of cut off. If you were to click on that box, guess what happens? This is interactive. It gets added to your personal calendar in your smartphone. Way, one touch. Thank you, I love the interaction, that's great. One touch. And you are able to actually put it right in your calendar. So whether I have my calendar set up 15 minutes before every one of these events, I get a reminder. Don't forget, you're wanted to go to Thanksgiving praise service. Bring people, you know, help people to really know and keep the community aspect of church alive in people's hearts. Not only the calendar, the track system, but you have the ability to send communication messages to your entire usership. That's probably not a word in the dictionary, but I'm patenting it, and I'm telling you it will be one soon. If selfie became a word in 2013 or 14, usership is going to be a word in 2015. Everyone who downloads your app, if you would like to communicate with all of them on a particular topic, you can certainly do so. Um, one suggestion here, this is, this is a recent one. I was interacting with a group of churches, and they had an ice storm, an unexpected ice storm in the Northeast on a Sunday morning. And so they had to cancel church. And a lot of churches are not used to having the process of canceling church. They don't know what to do. So how do they actually communicate with their body? Not many of them are on like the school closing list. So how do they communicate with their body? Well, this is a great way to do it. Message goes out to everybody Sunday morning due to inclement weather. We have to cancel church this morning. Stay safe and stay home. 
That message gets sent out from someone, the administrator of the app, from their personal computer. In seconds, a push notification goes out. You have a message from your app to you. I open it, boom, church is canceled today. It happens within seconds, that kind of push notification, that technology of today. And just to say this, I have, I'm the father, I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm the father of 14-year-old triplets. And pray for me. Actually, pray for my wife. Anyway, um, pray for both of us. They're great kids. I, they're, I have great kids. Really wonderful kids. But you know, I, the thing I always bring up here is I, my wife and I will send them email on occasion, like to simply let them know something. We get an email and we forward it to them. They don't check their email because email is old. Email is a thing of the past for them. They depend on this, the greatest and latest app that just came out to send them a push notification when someone's trying to get a hold of them. So they use Twitter or other, other apps that we have to keep tabs on all the time to make sure that they, when they are communicating with friends, they get a push notification. That's the same technology that you get with your app. So what that means is the little icon, the logo for your app, will have the little number one on it when, somebody's, when you're sending a message to somebody. Or if you get a, a few in the queue, you'll get number two, three, four. There are messages waiting for you to open within the app. Someone's trying to get a hold of you. So these are the great things. Um, I would mention two other things before I move on to the next part of the presentation. The two things I want to mention are uh, one of the great things you can do with the, the whole just sending communication messages to your entire usership um, is the, your sermons. Your app will support your sermons being sent out. It supports audio. So you take your sermon from Sunday. Let's just say on Friday afternoon, you want to send out a message to everyone in your congregation to let them know that pastor's going to be speaking on this passage of scripture this Sunday. Read it and come prepared to dig into God's word together. That's, that goes out Friday afternoon. Sunday happens. Monday, we send out another message. Here are the three follow-up questions or the three main points or the three topics that pastor covered yesterday in the sermon. And then somebody who wasn't there gets the message and says, oh, I missed it. I missed it. Well, Tuesday comes, and guess what? You send out the audio version, or even the video version, if you're that technical, and you can send it out right through the app so somebody can be on their smartphone, open your app, open your message, and listen to it while they're in the car, while they're doing whatever other business, right from their smartphone, they can hear you. This builds community and, and helps in the whole process of discipleship. Please understand, the app that we're talking about is not just a communication app. It is a spiritual growth app. You are called to disciple your people, to shepherd your flock. We want to provide you with a tool that you can pull out of the tool chest and say, this is a helpful piece to be able to do that with my congregation. The other thing I'm going to encourage you to do, if you do download between Sundays, go to the My Tracks page, go to the plus sign if you're on iOS, if you're an iPhone, if you're on uh, Android, just click on, you know, choose a, choose a topic. Sign up for Andy's app design. That's my track that I created within between Sundays. You will get nine days of content that show you what your app could do. Instead of me just talking about or showing you uh, pictures, I want you to experience it on your own smartphone. So download between Sundays, go to my tracks, sign up for Andy's app design, and you will get nine days of content that actually show you what could actually be done. So at this point in the presentation, I'm going to take us out to the internet, and I'm going to address the question of how hard is it to do what you're talking about, Andy. But I should spell go tandem correctly. So, once we get the process rolling and I will describe to you the process of how to get your app, you will receive administrative password and, and e we'll get an email address from you, we'll give you a password. You will go to this website, go tandem, it's not up there. It's gotandem.com. Hmm. Team. Yeah, we don't. We do not suggest that you watch your video while you're driving your car. Thanks for that pickup. I appreciate that. 
I don't want to be sued or anything. This is how I get to the back end of Between Sundays. And this is how you will get to the back end of your app. So once you go through the process, there's a process that we've worked out with John. What will happen is you'll get a license agreement that says it's free, free, free. Okay, let me say it three times so that you all understand we're not charging you for the life of the app. There's not a charge in six months or in a year. It's completely free to all churches of the Nazarene that sign up by May 31st. Let me hear two things. Let me reemphasize two things I just said. It's free. Okay. Your app is going to be free. Just like that. But your app is going to be free to your church. Okay. You have to be part of the church of the Nazarene. So this is not valid for your friends who are not Nazarene pastors. We'd love for you to talk about us, but we will charge them. Understand? So be sensitive about that. And then you need to sign up by May 31st. If you sign up on June 1st, that's it. Opportunity next. Yes, sir. Yes. This is the app that they keep pushing. That is correct. Thank you. Yes. Discipleship Place puts the webinars out. Once we get through the process and we create an admin for you, you're going to tell us who the administrator of your app is going to be. That email address, is sent. To, we send them a password. So I'm an, the administrator of an, of a, of a, yeah, I'm an, an administrator of an app. This is my email address. And then I have to type in my password. What is your password? Not telling anybody. <laughs> I'm not telling you. You're going to mess with between Sundays, but that's good. I love it. I did ask for interaction, but the peanut gallery can possibly... No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so these are my white label organizations that I'm the administrator of. White label is our way of saying we have built an app for you that's powered by GoTandem. You'll notice the logo of between Sundays. There it is, and the name between Sundays. When I click on it, I come to the back end. The back end is, uh, these are things that you're going to be required to fill in the blanks of. John Comstock will send you manuals that will describe what to do. We've written manuals to help you in this process. You're going to complete a description of your app. You're going to write about yourself, your church, your unique features, the things that you do. You want to include the location name of your church. So anybody who's looking for you in, in your town actually does a search on their, in their app store for your location might pick you up that way. You want to write a little description, maybe include your vision statement or your mission statement. Things that are unique about you can go right into the description. From there, you're going to fill in things that are already filled in. The URL... That takes you to your website. Your app name will be there already because we've chosen that. Support email, and then you're going to configure your app. This is the process where you choose color schemes, complementary colors, and you do stuff with your all-important icon. That's my technical way of saying do stuff. Your icon needs to come to us. Then your icon needs to be taken and... and all the app stores require about 12 different icons. So we provide you with a website where you go and for free, take your icon, which is another way of saying your logo, and convert that to all the other icons. Follow this process that we give you. Drag it, paste it, that kind of thing right in the back end of the app. Once that process is finished, again, we give you all the manuals that you need. Then we can build your app. John. Yes, it's one image that we need from you that gets resized into several formats. Your church logo is what we want. Yes. And it needs to be converted to a specific size, but I'm going to get there in just a couple minutes. Give you some pointers on how to do that. From there, once all of that is selected, I want to impress upon you. Your app will be built by us. Then we will submit it to both the iOS, that's the Apple, and the Google Play Android side. Once we do that, your app will then be live and cannot easily be changed. So, if you don't like your icon, change it before you give it to me. 
Because once, it, once your app is built, it takes us to actually do an upgrade of all the apps before we can change yours. You could have to live with your ugly picture for six months. So make sure you're happy with what you choose before we get to that final stage. Thumbs up, everybody? Okay, good. Then you can begin the fun part of actually updating your app, populating your app. And I wanna show you a little bit of that because this is great. So what you see in this section right here are all the tracks that are available in GoTan, I'm sorry, wait, in between Sundays. One of them you'll see is Andy's app design. You'll notice there are currently eight users and I significantly expect that number to increase. <coughs> hint, hint. There are nine messages. They come once a day for nine days. If I were to click right here on Andy's app design, I will come to the messages. I don't want to do that because you're going to see them and then you won't download the app and you won't do that. I want you to actually have the experience. What you can do is this very same process. You will be able to create, app, create tracks and then add all the content you want to them. So, I'm, this is all the back end. This is how you do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do it by creating an event. The organization name remains the same. It's between Sundays. Now, I'm going to call on this Greg. All right, Greg, where are you from? Uh, Byron Center, Michigan. Michigan. Okay, Greg, do you have an event coming up in your church that I can highlight in my calendar of events. You would have to know the date of it, maybe the time of it. Can, do you have one that comes to mind? Yes. Great. Let's go ahead and highlight your event. What is the event called? called um, Extravaganza. Ooh, I like it. Is that spelled correctly so far? Yep. Eggs. I'm sorry. T-R-A. Extravaganza. Okay. And where is your church located? Uh, Byron Center. Byron Center? B-Y-R-O-N. Is it Church of the Nazarene? Yep. Okay. So you're going to notice editorial status. It's, it's right now it's marked for published. I'm going to change that to draft. I leave it in draft mode until I'm sure I did not make any grammatical or spelling errors. You can always edit later, but it's easier to edit before. So I edit before and then I publish. When is this event, Greg? March 28th. It is now. If it wasn't, it is now. What time of day is that going to be? Two o'clock in the afternoon. We do military time. We're not. I, I'm. I'll see you later, and you can put your you can put your event in as well. Um, that's fine. Till five o'clock. Okay. So it has an end and start time. Notice we use military time. So twelve plus five is seventeen. So it starts at fourteen hundred hours, ends at seventeen hundred hours. Do you get the idea? It's just fill in the blanks. What description would you like me to put down? Tell me a little bit about this event. I, I'm not really sure I like blow-up games because it might mean that, you know, we're using explosives. I, okay, how about inflatable? Okay, I'm good. I'm thinking I don't want to promote, you know. And, okay, enjoy inflatables. Okay, and what else did you say? Food? Oh. Okay. Lots of candy? Okay. Anything about Jesus you want me to say there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to spell Jesus correctly, too. There you go. Okay. So there you have a little bit of an, a description. Again, you can write anything you want. It's up to you. I don't suggest blow-up games, but it's up to you. You'll notice that the next series of things are not starred. It means you don't have to include anything there, but you can if you want to. So do you can tell me, Greg, which of these you want me to fill in. Location name? Do you have an app already? Yes. 
Yeah, I was going to say I recognize your name, at least the high point name. Contact phone, you want that in there? Okay. And do you have a do you have a link to a website that will tell more people about this or where they can register? Just like that? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I look through this event. I make sure I did not create, I didn't actually make any errors. There's everything is spelled correctly. And then I change this to published. I go to the bottom and I simply say create event. In my cell phone, I open between Sundays. I will go to the calendar of events. And once it's picked up a signal, it will say, it will tell me that the event is there. And I'll show it to you when that happens. In the meantime, if you were to create an event and you needed to edit it, you can do so right here. You just hit the, you hit the event, edit event, or you can delete the event. All right, that is very simply how all of this functions. It's fill in the blanks. Sending out a communication message is very similar. You just simply will click on send communication message. You can then attach audio to it. You can link to a video on vimeo.com. You can include a graphic. All the details are there for you to then send that push notification out to everybody. Hey, pastor speaking about this on Sunday. Be ready for that. That's how as simple as it is. Okay, that being said. It just goes, yeah, just right there. So the, the calendar of event, you can see it. It's actually right there on March 28th. Gotcha. Extravaganza is right there on the self. It's right there immediately. Yes, sir. The way to, way to do that is actually put that on your website and we link to it and you do it right from your website. So, yeah, sure. As long as you can actually have a URL, we, link, we can link right to it. Right where I put in highpoint.com slash Easter, whatever, yeah, .org. You, that's wherever, wherever it is that you want people to go to to actually register for your event, you just link the, the URL right there. Okay, so that is very simply a very quick rendition of what to do on the back end. In conclusion, I want to take us back to the PowerPoint presentation and I want to show you my favorite feature of the white label. This is my favorite part. I told you I was a pastor for 15 years. I always wondered, how is it that I could know if what I'm talking about is relevant to where people are at? Do the topics I come up with actually mean anything to these people? They may tell me that it does, but how would I know? And of course, I had relationships with a lot of people, and I'd ask them questions, but would they really be honest with me? What was I struggling with? What are they struggling with? Well, when you come into your app, this says Go Tandem because this is overall Go Tandem users, but imagine if you will, instead of Go Tandem, it says High Point. It's your usership. Again, a new word for 2015. When they come into your app, they will anonymously tell you what they're struggling with because they want to have content that meets them in their struggle. Well, we will never tell you who. We'll never give you the name or email address of anyone. We have a privacy statement at gotandem.com backslash privacy. We protect the identity of the people who actually come into our app. But what we do is we pull their answers and we tell you what they're saying that they're struggling with. So what you see in the graph right here in the upper left-hand corner, the upper left quadrant, is those who are telling us, self-reporting, that they're struggling with anger. We break them in the x-axis going across horizontally by age group, starting with the teens, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s plus. The y-axis 
coming down are the percentages of the people who actually have downloaded the app tell us they're struggling in that area once a week or more. In each one of those categories, you have a gray woman and an orange man. Sometimes they overlap, so you can't see them distinctly. But it's the head of the icon that you want to look at. So let's take a look at the anger issues. According to the chart up there, what percentage of teenagers self-report that they deal with anger issues once a week or more? It's actually almost 60%. It's the head of the icon. And they, they overlap pretty well. And what's cool about this, I have my own anecdote for why this is. But when you're a teenager, I have three... Did I mention that I have three teenagers at home? Uh, I might have. That number is way low, let me tell you. The, the, the hormones that rage through their bodies, anger is an everyday occurrence almost. You know, her, knowing how to manage your anger, I think that's, you know, low. But what I find fascinating is it decreases when you get into your 20s. It goes from about 60% down to 40%. Well, that kind of makes sense. You're out on your own. You're starting your career. You find the love of your life, perhaps. Everything is honky-dory. It's great. Then you start having kids in your 30s and your anger comes back. <laughs> I have no scientific proof to prove that that's what that is, but that's my story. But here's the point. We, we will provide you with analytics that tell you what's going on in the life of your congregation. Not to rat on anybody, not to be able to say, oh, well, you know, there's just, but to give you empirical evidence that says, what can I do to help them in that area of their lives? How can we approach the anger issue in our church if we have one? What can we do? Preach a sermon series? Teach a Sunday school class? Start a small group? I don't know. My job is to let you know we can provide this opportunity. Your job is to and brainstorm how can we meet people where they are spiritually and help them to grow, to get closer to Jesus, to work through these areas of their lives. We measure anger, criticizing others, destructive thoughts, difficulty forgiving oneself, forgiving others, discontentment, discouragement, fear or worry. One of the categories where you see women tend to struggle more than men do overall. Greed, jealousy, laziness, loneliness. Again, all of these are questions that we're asking about in the spiritual assessment as people come into the app and answer those questions. Lust or porn. There's one that guys struggle with more, obviously. And I'll tell you a little, I always say this little anecdote because I think it's very true. 80% of men in their 20s self-report that they struggle with lust or porn once a week or more. Interestingly enough, 40% of 20-year-old men tell us that they struggle with lying once a week or more. So in my estimation, that number, instead of 80%, should be 120%. <laughs> if they were really being truthful. Okay, again, the concept isn't to rat anybody out or to tell, tell somebody, sorry, you won't ever know who it is. If we don't have enough sampling size within that age group, we don't give you data for that. Because we don't want you looking up and saying, well, we know Sally, who's the only 13-year-old in the group, we know what she's struggling with based on this. That's not the idea. We need a good pool of, of numbers of people in the app before we can provide you with good analytics. And that's what we do because we are scientific researchers. That's, we have researchers on staff that do this very thing. Not only can we tell you what's going on with the struggles, but we can also, each one of the questions in the assessment is tied to a fruit of the Spirit. And in conclusion, as I rush through here, you've got the nine fruit of the Spirit, a couple names that are a little bit different, but the orange dot being the way that it was when somebody, when your whole usership uh, started, they downloaded the app and took the assessment. You preach to them over the course of the year or six months. You ask everybody to retake the assessment and the blue dot tells you where you are six months later or a year later so you can actually document growth. So here are the distinctives. This is a spiritual growth tool, empirically based, scientifically proven to bring people closer to Jesus on a daily basis. It's personalized Bible engagement content that meets people where they are 
spiritually, facilitating life transformation that can only come from my dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. You get analytics delivered regularly detailing app usage and the self-reporting of user struggles. You are able to send your own content in video, audio, graphic, and print form. You are able to send specified materials to groups within your ministry using the track system. You can communicate with your users regularly with a calendar events through push notifications and don't forget the all-important donate feed. So, how do we start? How do you get an app? Well, here's how we do this. Uh, John Comstock is the point of reference. I am his backup. I'll be working with John. We work very closely together. We need six pieces of information. John has this in a document that he can send to you via email. You all received a, a, a handout when you came in. It has John's information on the handout. You send him an email and say, I want to start the process to get the app. We ask you for six pieces of information. Name of your organization. We need to know the name that, of the app that you wish to have. You need to search the app store to find out if your name is already taken. Every name in the app store must be unique. It cannot be more than 25 characters that include spaces between words. Please search your app stores to see if your name is taken before you do that. We need to know the name of your app administrator. You can have more than one. We just need to know who they are. Give us their email addresses and phone number. We can get in touch with them. And then we need the all-important icon. The icon is your logo. You might have it uh, in a smaller size. We need it to be 1024 by 1024. That's square. Now you're going to say, I don't have that, Andy. Well, well, I know. Most of us don't. So here's a website to go to. The website is www.pick, P-I-C, the number two, icon.com. Pick to icon.com. What that site does is it takes your current logo in whatever form you have, and it will transfer it into whatever size you want it to be. Pick, P-I-C, two, the number two, icon. Pick2icon.com. If you choose 1024 by 1024 in the PNG file, which is one of the options, it will send back to you and you can download your logo in that format. That's what we need to get this ball rolling. Once we get those six pieces, of, once John gets those six pieces of information, he forwards them to us. Our team then creates a license agreement. The license agreement says it's free to you, but the Bible content piece you can use, but it belongs to us, it belongs to Back to the Bible or Go Tandem. Once that is signed and returned, we create an admin for you. You go to the back end with the manuals. You create all, you make all your decisions. What color scheme? What do you want it to look like? You fill in your description. All of the holes you fill in. Once you're finished with that entire process, we build your app. We submit it to the app stores. Your app then becomes live after Apple says, okay. We have no way of knowing how long that process can take. Once we have it, it's not long on our end, but Apple can take a week, they could take two, they could decide they don't like something, and even though all these apps are all the same, we found that you've gotta just be nice to Apple and do what they want, so we do. It could, take a, it could take a week. We've had situations where somebody comes into the app and they have their app in a week. It all depends on what you, how motivated you are on the back end to get your stuff done. It'll be free to you as long as you start this process. You send your email with those six things to John by May 31st. If you don't do that, the question was, how much does it cost? Our standard fee is a setup charge of $1,500, and then we charge by the month or by the year. So it's either $100 a month for up to 1,000 users or $1,000 per year if you pay that in advance. So it's an ongoing relationship. We're providing it for free for life for all of you. We would scale it down for smaller churches, just so you know. If you're you know, a small church, you wouldn't pay that much, but that is our standard fee. That being said, here's John's email address and mine. If you have any questions, his phone number and email address are on that sheet of paper that you got on the way in. This is the ability, this is the details of how to get your app. I am over my time, so I need to stop. 
I'm going to pass it off to John and I'll be around. If you have any other questions, you certainly can feel free to see me. We also brought with us, we want you to come by our table, which is on display over there, but we brought with us books that we write. We do research, I told you that, about what the felt needs are of people, of Christians. We write books to meet the needs that people tell us they have. So we have a series of books. Our books we sell for only $5. They're meant to be real felt need help right where people are at. Please come by, see us here at this table or see us in our table in the uh, display room. Thanks very much, guys, for your attention. I'll turn it over to John. This was definitely worth it, right? I want to let you go, but please, just a couple of quick things. Number one is I want your help because we need to get the word out and let churches know. You're here among people. You're interacting with other leaders, other pastors. Ask them if they've heard about this, and if not, send them to the exhibit so they can talk to these wonderful people and Nicole and I don't know if you introduced Brittany. Them. I Brittany, didn't. I'm so sorry. Over there, and they will help Terrible. you out. That's Nicole and Brittany, my wonderful cohorts from Lincoln, Nebraska. Woo -hoo. Good Good for things. Uh, if you don't have an image or a logo and you want one, email me and let me know. We have an individual that will do that for you for a very small fee. And she's helped several churches. I can put you in contact with her. We have someone that can help you with the online giving piece. So we'll give you a reduced grade. They're actually, I think, in the exhibit area as well, uh, Jerry, with uh, Stewardship Technologies. So I would encourage you to visit with them if you're interested in that. And finally, let me just say the reason why this is significant is one of the things we want to do as a denomination is this is going to be a strategy because it's going to allow us to resource churches in a way we've never been able to do before. <clears throat> what happens if 2,000 churches have the mobile app and we could go to some of the larger churches that have video teams and say, can you help create tracks for us that you can go online and download and plug into your mobile app? Would that be beneficial or not? Yeah. And that's the kind of thing I hope that we can do, but the first phase is let's get as many people as we can on board, which is why I'm commissioning you to get people. The risk is zero. There's no risk. There's no risk. There's no financial There's no reason for anyone not to have a mobile <laughs> app, and this is really going to be a great thing down the road for us as a denomination. So I want to thank you guys. You guys have been incredibly generous. The ministry is a great ministry partner, and uh, I can't say that enough. So thank you very much. Thank you. you